in this video we will talk about this stroke particularly about the ischemic stroke and i will make a separate video on the hemorrhagic stroke and nursing management of stroke so talking about the stroke it occurs when the blood to a part of the brain is interrupted or reduced preventing brain tissue from getting oxygen and nutrients and due to this the cells of the brain start to die in minutes a stroke occurs when there is ischemia that is inadequate blood flow to a part of the brain or there is hemorrhage that is bleeding into the brain that results in the death of brain cells the functions controlled by the affected part of brain are affected like we know that the visual functions are controlled by the occipital lobe and if occipital lobe of the brain is affected the visual functions will be impaired the other terms that are used for stroke are brain attack and cerebrovascular accident now talking about the types of stroke there are mainly two types of stroke the first is the ischemic stroke uh, which comprises 87 percent of all the stroke cases and second is the hemorrhagic stroke which uh, accounts for 13 percent of all the stroke cases talking about the ischemic stroke it is the sudden loss of function from disruption of blood supply to a part of the brain the, it happens when the brain's blood vessels become narrowed or blocked causing severely reduced blood flow that is ischemia now the types of ischemic stroke these include large artery thrombotic strokes which account for 20% 20, 20 of the ischemic strokes and these are caused by the atherosclerotic plaques in large blood vessels of the brain. Second is the small penetrating artery thrombotic strokes accounting for 25% of all the ischemic strokes. These are also called as the lacunar strokes because of the cavity that is created after the death of the infarcted brain area. It affects one or more arteries of the uh, brain vasculature. The third type of ischemic strokes is the cardiogenic embolic strokes accounting for 20% of the ischemic strokes. These result when the emboli originate in the heart and travel to the cerebral vasculature, occluding the blood vessels there. These are usually associated with cardiac dysrhythmias like uh, the atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation is when the upper two chambers of the heart beat irregularly instead of beating effectively to move the blood into the ventricles and uh, this increases the chances of clot formation which can then uh, block the um, blood vessels and uh, result in ischemic stroke. These types of strokes can be prevented by anticoagulation threat. The fourth type of ischemic strokes is the cryptogenic strokes accounting for 30% of the ischemic strokes and these are the strokes with no known cause. The last type of ischemic stroke is the other types of strokes accounting for 5% of the ischemic strokes and these can result uh, from the causes like uh, illicit drug use like cocaine, coagulopathies, these are the diseases which can result in excessive bleeding or excessive clot formation. Also these can result from migraines, spontaneous dissection of the carotid or vertebral arteries. Dissection means tear in the artery wall that allows blood to leak between the layers of, uh, of the artery and to separate them. This results in the bulge in the artery and which can then occlude the blood flow through that artery. Now talking about the causes of ischemic stroke. The causes of ischemic stroke can be arranged under three headings. The uh, hypoxic causes, the embolic causes and the thrombotic causes. The hypoxic causes include cardiac arrest, significant shock like there may be septic shock or cardiogenic shock and severe respiratory failure. The embolic causes include the cardioembolic like uh, atrial fibrillation, left ventricular uh, aneurysm and mechanical heart value and the paradoxical embolism. In this the clot comes from the DVT and crosses over to the left atrium through patent foramen oval and obstructs the cerebral artery. Foramen oval is the hole in the interatrial septum which is present in the fetus and uh, this hole closes within 24 hours after the birth. But in some cases it doesn't close and the foramen oval remains patent. Now the clot can come from the deep venous thrombosis into the uh, right atrium and this, can, this clot can cross over to the left atrium through this foramen oval and uh, then this clot can travel up into the cerebral vasculature and cause the occlusion of cerebral arteries there and this can result in the ischemic stroke. The thrombotic causes include the clot formation due to the rupture of atherosclerotic plague and it usually occurs in the small and large blood vessels. Now talking about the risk factors of the ischemic stroke, there are two types of risk factors. The non-modifiable over which we don't have any control and second is the modifiable. The non-modifiable risk factors include age, male gender and particular ethnicities. The modifiable include hypertension, obesity, diabetes and smoking. Now the pathophysiology of uh, ischemic stroke. 
first due to any cause that we discussed already like the rupture of atherosclerotic plaque or the thrombus there is the obstruction of the cerebral blood vessels when there is obstruction of the cerebral blood vessels less blood will be traveling through that blood vessel and this results in reduced blood flow to the brain when there is reduced blood flow to the brain the affected part will receive less oxygen and there will be a reduced partial pressure of the oxygen and increased partial pressure of the carbon dioxide in the affected part since the affected part receives less oxygen this results in the shifting of respiration from aerobic to anaerobic remember that anaerobic respiration is less effective and it also results in the production of lactic acid lactic acid is a vasoconstrictor and uh, this results in the vasoconstriction which further reduces the blood flow also due to anaerobic respiration there is reduced uh, atp production the adenosine triphosphate that is atp are very important for the function of nerves and when there is reduced atp production the nerve cells uh, will not be able to depolarize that is they will not be uh, able to maintain their function properly this results in the diminished or absent nerve function which uh, ultimately leads to the infarction of the affected brain area that is the death of the affected brain tissue now some important points regarding ischemic stroke the first is the penumbra in the early stroke it is an area of low cerebral blood flow around the area of infarction this area receives less blood flow and it is uh, at the risk of getting infarcted but this can be uh, saved or revitalized by proper treatment and uh, this reduces the area of infarction second after having a stroke without treatment a person loses 1.9 million neurons per minute and the brain ages 3.6 years per hour without treatment now the clinical manifestations of the ischemic stroke the clinical manifestations depend on the location of the lesion the part that is affected and the size of the affected area there can be a variety of manifestations that the patient may have and we will discuss them under different headings the first is the motor deficits the patient may have hemiparesis that is weakness on one side of the body or hemiplegia that is paralysis on one side of the body remember if the left side of the brain is affected the hemiparesis and hemiplegia occur on the right side of the body and vice versa the patient may have ataxia that is loss of control or coordination and dysarthria that is difficulty in forming words dysphagia that is uh, difficulty in swallowing the verbal deficits include expressive aphasia that is inability to form words that are understandable receptive aphasia that is inability to understand the spoken words or that uh, there may be global aphasia which is the mixture of both expressive aphasia and the global aphasia the sensory deficits include paresthesia which is the sensation of numbness or tingling in any of the body parts the cognitive deficits include short and long term memory loss decreased attention span impaired ability to concentrate poor abstract thinking and altered judgment the emotional deficits include loss of self control emotional liability that is rapidly shifting moods feelings of isolation fear hostility and anger the visual field deficits may include homonymous hemianopsia which is blindness in half of the visual field in one or both of the eyes as you can see in this picture loss of peripheral vision can be there and the patient may have a uh, diplopia that is double vision when the patient comes to the emergency department he or she can present with a variety of the following signs and symptoms like uh, the patient may have numbness or weakness of uh, arm leg or face particularly on one side of the body confusion or change in mental status the patient may have trouble speaking or understanding speech the visual disturbances can be there there can be difficulty in walking or dizziness and uh, there uh, may be sudden severe headache now how can we diagnose the ischemic stroke the first diagnostic evaluation that we use is the non contrast ct scan this should be performed within 25 minutes or less from the uh, time the patient presents to the emergency department this is used to determine if the event is ischemic or hemorrhagic as the type of uh, treatment depends on the type of stroke second we can use ecg or car carotid ultrasound to determine the source of embolism we can also go for ct angiography magnetic resonance imaging magnetic resonance angiography of brain and neck vessels to uh, determine the patency of the blood vessels that supply to the brain now the prevention of ischemic stroke it depends on controlling the risk factors when we control the risk factors there are less chances that the uh, person will be having an ischemic stroke 
uh, it includes uh, controlling hypertension cessation of smoking uh, having a healthy diet exercising regularly controlling weight and lowering the cholesterol levels now the medical management of ischemic stroke the first therapy is the thrombolytic therapy that is dissolving the clot and it is approved by the US FDA it involves administration of the recombinant tissue plasminogen activator the uh, tissue plasminogen activator should be given within 60 minutes of patient arriving to the emergency department and the treatment window for thrombolytic therapy is 3 hours and in some cases it can be extended up to 4.5 hours now how it works is that when the clot forms there is a substance that is called plasminogen which gets trapped within the clot when we need to uh, break the clot we release the substance tissue plasminogen activator which converts the plasminogen into its active form that is plasmin the plasmin breaks the fibrin into soluble products in this way there is the breakdown of the clot it includes the endovascular therapy which involves the administration of medication directly to the brain with the help of catheter we can administer the tissue plasminogen activator at the site of clot or we can remove the clot with the stent retriever now the therapy for patients not receiving the thrombolytic therapy not all the patients are candidates for thrombolytic therapy so in the patients not receiving the thrombolytic therapy we can use anticoagulants like heparin or low molecular weight heparin we can give supplemental oxygen if the partial pressure of oxygen drops below uh, 95% elevation of the head end of the bed to reduce the intracranial pressure hemicraniectomy which involves removing a large flap of the skull and opening the dura to allow the brain to swell and uh, it also reduces the intracranial pressure intubation with an endotracheal tube to establish a patent airway if necessary and frequent neurologic assessments to determine if the stroke is evolving and if uh, other acute complications are developing now the surgical prevention of ischemic stroke the first procedure is the carotid end arterectomy this involves a removal of the atherosclerotic plaque or thrombus from the carotid artery and it is indicated in patients who have moderate to severe carotid artery stenosis the second procedure is the carotid artery stenting which can be performed with or without angioplasty in angioplasty a catheter is inserted into the uh, artery and threaded to the area of a blockade at the area of stenosis or blockade a balloon is inflated which opens up the artery and uh, th this is termed as angioplasty alternatively if uh, there is a stent left at the site of stenosis to keep the lumen of the artery open this is termed as carotid artery stenting thank you that was all about the ischemic stroke